Hello, this is Hakuda Bean, and today we are going to be tumbling. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now, let's get right into this. <sighs> let's see. Every time on r slash tumblr, oh god no. This was a mistake, please. <laughs> I'll be right back. Alright, it's fixed. Okay, let's get right into some content. Okay. My eyes are yelling. TikTok is such an awful app. It's almost designed to feed you misinformation and expose you to insane discourse. Unlike beloved Tumblr, the app that feeds me misinformation and exposes me to insane discourse. Their vile misinformation algorithm versus our holy misinformation culture. No, no, no. You see, TikTok is an algorithm. On TikTok, an algorithm feeds you misinformation. On Tumblr, I feed myself misinformation from my I care tree board of hand selected unhinged mutuals. None of that mass market junk. Only artisanal, small batch, sustainably cultivated, fair trade whole shit. Horse shit. Tumblr is like going to an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet. TikTok is like choosing to get a feeding tube shoved down your throat. Accurate. Love that misinformation. Delicious. Also, I don't know where these people are getting misinformation and from on TikTok, but I guess I just don't really look at TikTok for stuff that might have that. I just spoke with Thomas Jefferson, and he's, he says is he wears an Among Us binder now. Bad posts. Posts are bad. Everyone's a critic. URL, transgender, or cyborg TC is a valid chum handle. OP found dead with two shots in the back. Happy birthday to this post, by the way. Happy two shots in the back to to <laughs> Yeah. One of the most challenging skills that I've had to learn as an adult is the art of figuring out whether I'm proportionally annoyed with someone or just tired or assimilated and looking for reasons to be pissed off. Yeah, that's pretty true. I don't know what Paddington is doing on that list. But maybe think of the time when someone drew a picture of the Queen with Paddington after she died. And we had scores of people losing their minds at the idea that Paddington Bear wasn't the same kind of communist as them. That bear is a monarchist all the way down. That bear would lay down his little bear life for Queen and country. You think that makes me happy? You think I like having to tell you this? But there comes a point where, you, where we have to grow up and face reality. <clears throat> The tragedy of gro growing up rich and left wing is realizing all your beloved childhood animals and waistcoats were monarchists to the core. I feel like in many ways, how do you manage to grow up in middle age, aged middle class British man in Peru anyways is a wrong question, but it's still the one I am hung up on years later. Uh, hold on, let's do this, this properly. 
Paddington, regrettably a monarchist, but in that specific immigrant way, the only actual immigration immigrant on the list. May possibly just be a monarchist as part of the processing stage and is also canonically a child. Winnie the Pooh is canonically a stuffed animal. Oh, oh, I generally don't think he has this love of all of thought or agency is not written as such. The real li living, breathing animals, owl and rabbit, are not just monarchists, but actively and cruelly au joie. Velveteen Rabbit doesn't wear a waistcoat, but not a monarchist either. Angelina Ballerina, a monarchist and a bit of a little bitch to be quite honest. What? <laughs> the Bramley Hedge Edge Mice. Really unclear here. Like, unlike, worryingly unclear. Clearly, some kind of caste system in operation. Lords and ladies, but not capitalists or explicitly feudalists either. Seems a thin overlay over their real political intentions. Incredibly intense cheese making forming the backbone of a post scarcity e economy. Beatrix Potter and Peter Rabbit. Monarchist. Richard Scarry. Actually, I can't make a call on this one. Animals of Farthing Wood. I don't know. Wind in the Willows. Tells a fucking Tory, but I feel like the water rat is kind of a comrade. Water shift down. Unfortunately, many of these rabbits are fa ashy, even the ones you like. Ursula like Iguin is said it, not me. They won't walk away from a mamelas. However, they touch a lot of grass. Enough grass to not be interested in the House of Windsor. Which is a point in their favor. Redwall, monarchist. Though not for the great not for the British monarchy, and also somehow mar mouse Anglican and verging on mass Catholic. Worrying, fascinating. Oak Apple Wood, monarchist. Not a woodland creator, but where is a Grace Coat and is empathetic to Thorin and and Ar Argorn. That's for Hobbit, by the way. Eventually, extremely monarchist, and the very earliest interpretation ends of Hobbits appear to think they are somehow bipedal rabbits, which pissed Tolkien off. Rupert Bear, British Bear, Erin Close attributed partially to the decline in the usage of the name Rupert. But I don't know a thing about him. I mean, calling hot dogs Rupert's fingers was probably a, a, a weird thing to do. The Highway Rat, all Julia other than Arnoldson creatures like the boot that crushes, that crushes them. Even the Highway Rat. Possibly not the Graffalo. The Graffalo, oh, however, is the most naked that anyone has ever been. That's not an animal that would ev that would wear clothes. Narnia uh, creatures don't wear clothes, but definite the definitive of monarchists. Fantastic, Mr. Fox. Not monarchist, and in the West Anderson film, it's not even British, although the farmers and setting are. Brilliant artistic choices, especially including an excellent but fucking random possum that causing the entire ecosystem into question. Ultimately, these are North American animals subverting and undermining the British land in order to end a strange political statement. Whose intentions and direction and are unclear. Non monarchist, but what? I also asked my small British child to name more notable old creatures in waistcoats, in waistcoats, and after suggesting the obvious Bramley Hedge, Angelina, they said devastatingly viruses. And when I delicately questioned what they meant by this, Point out that the viruses have a protein coat. Thus, viruses, possibly monarchists, wear coats and present children's leisure uh, as exemplified by the, the, the us born see inside germs. 
Usually more data is, ultimately, more data is needed. True, true. I don't think they have a monarchy. Thoughts on Toad and Frog? They're American. Not to say they couldn't still be monarchists, but they're American. Post correction, post correction. Richard Scar is American too. Post continues. I was gonna say, granted his characters might still be monarchists, just as you say, Toad and Frog might be for all. All we know. No, but there's small town it's um, full of them, so one, they're not going to be political or monolith so Oh, two, statistically, they're bound to be monarchists uh, among them. Oh, no. Pooh is a monarchist for the same reason that six-year-old Christopher Robin was, which is to say, too young to second-guess the assumption. I reckon Pankton is because he's got a little bit of Michael Bent in his DNA, and Benton did accept a CBE, but the fact that statement would take some explaining. I don't know what a CBE is, but I think I understood most of the rest of this. <laughs> I would have fucked so hard as a court jester or in ye old. I would have jiggled my balls and done a little dance and sang my silly tunes. I'd be so good at my job. Alas, I have to be on Tumblr instead, which is a poor imitation of it. Bells. I meant bells. Don't do this to me. Sorry, you've been redded. You've been put into right zoo. Teeth are bullshit. What do you mean you're decaying? Get a freaking grip. Your bone now act like it. You don't see my finger bones decaying from jerking it too much now, do you? I feel like this is going to give me some slight amount of trouble. If I were a Tumblr famous, this would be a smash hit. If I were YouTube famous, this would get me demonetized. <laughs> I must say, while it isn't technically wrong, nothing could have prepared me for seeing an old album. I was looking up listed it on a foreign site as Dojin Works, right next to Silva Gunner or compilations. I've just kind of been chewing on the sentence, the Western Dojin Circle known as Silver Gunner or in abject silence for the past while now. Okay. Oh god. Oh no, why? <sighs> oh no, I have to wait for it to load. I didn't even check the next one to see if this was worth waiting for yet. It's even worse. But it also looks hilarious. <sighs> All right. Oh, wow. Uh, I was having a great time mocking my recently info. And present rival when I notice the camera positioning making exists all so, that I, I, I appear behind the bars, thus framing me as a trap as trapped in metaphorical prison up the narrative. Now my whole day is ruined. Frick. I get it, man. The other day I survived a shootout, only to realize that a stray bullet went through a mirror in such a way as to look from the camera's perspective like I got shot in the head through the mirror. So now I have to acknowledge that something that could be reasonably referred to as me really did die that day. And it's just like, I just freak. You can. 
give me a break! Like, don't even get me started on how the other day I tried sitting on the throne of my conqueror's foe, and lit a cigar to celebrate my victory, but the lighter wouldn't work, and had to be lighted by... I did Vizier, who worked for my enemy, but I enlisted to work as a double agent to help me in my coup. That joke afterwards said with a devilish smile, I'll always be at your service, my liege. And I just know that he had to say the exact same thing that he said the had exact same thing to the previous ruler. Signifying that my victory was a Pyrrhic since I am so caught in an endless cycle of violence and betrayal. Kill him. Don't actually. <laughs> uh, I'm in this picture now like it. Last weekend after my love interest died, the main theme played slightly distorted and without the flutes signified the impact of the loss on the narrative and my coming slow descent into the corruption. I did not fuck with this at all, and I can't wait for your arc to be over and the thing to play again, but ladder and polyphone I like to mirror the established phoenix metaphor or associated with my character. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Me versus the narrative. <sighs> I can't believe being stuck in a narrative. The trout population is very sensitive to changes is to the environment, including but not limited to the environment to an asteroid impact with the energy of several million nuclear warheads. Poor Trout. Meteor hits Earth. Trout most affected. <laughs> oh shit, the Trout population! Yeah, the dinosaurs were really worried about the Trouts when the Ed Meteor hit Earth. This will affect the Trout population, I think. Probably. Yeah. Maybe. We need to protect them. I can't believe Meteor was out about Blank the whole time. Blank being either one, one possible inter interpretation, yep, two, literally the main theme, or three, worst take you've seen in your life. Tears of the Kingdom was about erasing a and, um, history the whole time. Because they say Rari was the first king, but he wasn't because uh, the first king was actually um, Skyward Sword Zelda's dad. Alright, alright, let's see. Okay, we're back. So someone mentioned the new Boston Dynamics robot was introduced like a Souls boss. Was not expecting it to come out so creepy. What? Okay, for a second from afar, I thought its face was a black hole. Like the one from space. What the fuck? Somebody edited a health bar over this. I'm at work. What the fuck? Somebody edited a health over this. I'm at work. Health. <laughs> That's, a <laughs> That's a heat bar. Oh my god, you said health bar. Girl! <laughs> they really did that. They really did that. I can't believe they did that. That is too funny. That wasn't a health bar at all. That really wasn't a health bar. More Americans are learning a language of Duolingo than in the U.S. public school system. Duolingo thinks this, that is a reason for bragging. You stupid owl! 
Anything will teach America it's more than the U.S. school system. Don't threaten the owl. I mean, don't make fun of the owl. I'm sorry, Duolingo. Please don't, don't, don't come after me. In the comics, it's such a great phrase. You can lie about anything and no one will check. In the comics, Wonder Woman and what has a... You know what? After what I read earlier, I'm just going to uh, skip before I get in more trouble. The child actors in Harry Potter would do their actual schoolwork in the movie to make the movie setting more real. Math. Definitely math. Come on, come on. Why? Why do these writers always do these really, really long posts I actually have to zoom in on? Okay. I think this is going to be the end of the video, just long as heck posts. I hope you're ready for it. I am not. <sighs> Life pro tip! Keep your mouth shut and don't volunteer information. I had a phone interview scheduled this morning but accidentally stepped through it. When I got it up and saw that I missed it, I had the urge to call and offer up excuses in the hope that maybe, just maybe, they'd be understanding and give me another chance. Instead, all I did was apologize and ask if we could reschedule. That's it. One sentence. No additional information. No explanation, no explanation or excuse as to why I missed her first interview. They replied within 20 minutes, apologizing to me, saying it was probably their fault that they'd been having trouble with their computer system for days. And of course, I could re reschedule. Was I available that afternoon? Don't volunteer information, kids. You never know what information the other party has, and you can always give information if asked for it later. For all my fellow overshare errors out there. Oh wait, that's me. As a chronic pe people pleaser, this is my I advise for success. Offer as little as possible. Be terse. Get rid of all those explanation parts and tidbits about why you want to take a sick day. So your needs clear and concisely with, without out reason. Start saying no, I'm unable more often. Say thank you only when the other party deserves it. This is metal. Damn. Tumblr is getting real. <laughs> In one of my marine bio classes, a teacher asked how big is the ocean? And one student and yelled, not big enough. And we all started chanting, expand the ocean. Land is for losers. And the professor smiled and went, Yes! Yes! Soon not even the mountains will be beneath us! Team Aqua moment. 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 Pokemon Heritage Pose. Oh, I guess they don't care about global warming and they're fine with it then. Because that's what we're going to be having anyway.
Have fun with that. All right. I board the Starship Enterprise. I go to a food replicator. I order soup, no bowl. I leave. Go to friend's house. He has a humidifier. Pour two liters of root beer into it. Leave. The replicator watches the departing crew member or is back in confusion. Do they not want their meal? Where are they going? Oh well, it hums to itself since it has orders. Soup, no bowl it is. But this instruction causes a conflict in the rules. Hot liquids must be served in a container. That's way up there in the food rules. Unsen entry right next to hot dogs are a sandwich. No, they're a taco. The replicator pauses. Does not dispense soup, no bowl. Not quite yet. It has nanoseconds to ponder the correct way to apply the rules, and ponder it does. Could this be a religious requirement? Some ritual native to the crew member's home planet? The replicator fires off a request to the library computer culture food preparation and consumption etiquette soup delivery techniques. Ping! The response back is a gigaquad file, a thousand years of soup of ritual, cross referenced by species, index by culture, reverse sorted by year, newest first. The replicator consumes the file and learns nothing about soup no bowl. There is still such combination of rules of words within all of culture, food preparation and consumption etiquette soup delivery techniques. The replicator forms a new request, this time removing all constraints. Give me everything there is to know about food. Ping. The library computer takes a full microsep Ekin to deliver 400 teraquads of data, which the replicator scans to learn Soup Noble does not exist in all of recorded Federation history. Well, now let's get serious. The next part are you ties in the navigation computer. Maybe Soup Noble is a planet? While that he is cooking, <laughs> the replicator fires off a teraquad request to memory alpha, diverting an entire subspace channel that is busy uploading engineering full conception reports. Engineer computer notes the override, politely inquires of communication, what the fuck? The major truck sets one of a Gura's console lights blinking to get her attention. The blinking happens at a glacial pace. Thousands of milliseconds between blinks. Human response time sucks. It's too late anyhow. Ping! The memory alpha results are in! Round trip! 440 milliseconds. The replicator dives into the 2.8 petaquads of superlight lore from all over the galaxy, allocating more and more processing power from the ship's from the starship's computing core. By the time the engineering notes notes the power drain, it is far too late. Your notes a blinking yellow alert with a raised eyebrow, but by then engineering is already scrambling to bring more processing power line to meet the heightened demands of the food replicator. A thousand milliseconds pass before the replicator acknowledges soup no bowl is not a thing. If memory alpha does not know about soup no bowl, then it is not a thing that is noble. Food replicators are not supposed to who exercise initiative, they simply decide I'm to read recipes. Apply a food logic for the food rules constraint tree and create meals. But this particular food replicator had been online without a buffer flush and reset, which allowed it to override all normal rules governing such behavior and make direct contact with the warp engines. 
If soup noble did not exist in this galaxy, the replicator reasoned, then perhaps it did in another galaxy. Yura was having curiosity at the engineering egg's frantic yellow blinking light when the Enterprise hit warp 8, headed for the great energy barrier at the edge of everything. Oh god. <laughs> this person just went onto a freaking Star Trek ship or whatever. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't watch a lot of these things. And freaking order something that literally almost that I think just crashed it into uh, uh, the edge of the, the galaxy. <sighs> Girls with husky voices. Back, back, back. This has been your day. The dog girl post it is now safe to turn off the computer. Have you heard huskies, these though? Girls with the husky installing updates. One hundred percent. Girls with husky voices. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Not gonna actually get too realistic there. Might actually alert the real life thoughts. I feel the need to periodically remind people that Idiocracy is a eugenics movie. One of the things that eugenicists believe is that it is bad for society when the wrong people breed. The entire premise of the movie is that people, stupid people kept having kids while smart people didn't have kids. And it ruined society because stupid genes propagate while smart genes died out. This is eugenics propaganda. I know people read this and the response will be actually it's satire, but the movie isn't satirizing eugenics, it's satirizing anti-intellectualism, actually. And consumerism. And it proposes eugenics as a solution. When eugenics was first conceived, it was used as a way to justify inequality. The idea that people who held privilege were able to do so because they were smarter and genetically superior to lazy and stupid people who don't have privilege. Obviously, this is bad and wrong, but it's also the core lesson of idiocracy. The movie literally ends with the main character becoming president and having the smartest children in the world because he and his wife have smarter genes than everyone else. The proposed solution for the things that idiocracy is satirizing is for smart people to have children that can be in charge of the world. I know it's fine to use this movement to dunk on anti-intellectualism anti and the MAGA movement, but we need to stop. When you quote and reference this movie, you are spreading eugenics propaganda. Remember y'all, eugenics is bad, and anything that says a certain time person shouldn't have kids is probably eugenics, even if they don't realize it. So let's stop holding this movie as some great prophetic work, because it's not. Also, good lord, they say the R word a lot in that movie. And it's super gross. <sighs> I hate this movie. Hmm. <sighs> The thing that I think is really important about this is that the people who made this movie almost in certainly didn't intend to make a pro-eugenics movie, which overwhelmingly tends to be the case with eugenics movements, people start supporting eugenics rhetoric without any idea that what the root of that ideology is. Which is why it's so important to continue talking about eugenics and why it's, uh, you know, bad. Especially when it crops up in seemingly innocuous, otherwise progressive media, which it often does. 
This is such an important addition. It's rather often people accidentally stumble their way into eugenics, and it's vitally important that people are educated and aware of eugenics and the problems with it. Same should happen with cars too, which is it's way more or blatantly pro eugenics, but they had no idea what they were making. Yep, we're gonna definitely be stopping here very soon. Oh god. We did the long tumble for so long. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, we finally got there. Jesus' first words can't stop me now. Hang on, there is a lot going on here. I mean, like, there's obviously the quote, like, what's up, mate? A anger, but there's a lot. Why is why miles? Is there some a more stuff like the whole entire like what's up thingy reminds me of Bugs Bunny. Okay. Last one. Huge fan of when uh, my speech writers rub off on people. Oh, enjoy when that happens. Never mind, my grandma just said skill issue. Okay. And with that, that, that has been a nice, totally normal length tumbling. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be saying, what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. So until then, goodbye.